for some participation here. I'm going to need that second microphone in uh, just a second. Um, I want to see this. There's six things I'm looking for. I want to see if there's someone in here who has um, it's a parent, whether it's a mother, father, a parent that has their son or daughter here in the room with them. Okay? A parent that has a son or a daughter with their, in the room with them. Okay? Good. Okay. So I would like to see if there is a parent that would like to make a presentation of love to their son or daughter today. Sheila. Good. So there's number one. Sheila. Oh, Sheila. I need a Jerry Carroll for that one. I need a man. I want a Jerry Carroll so bad, but you have to have hair for that. Um, is there a son or a daughter here that would like to make a presentation of love to their parent? Is there a son or a daughter that would like to make a presentation of love to them? Don't worry about the presentation. We got it. All right, Josiah. Thank you. Uh, you were the one. <clears throat> uh, mm. You had your hand up first? All right, so we're going to go with the older. Let the older serve the younger. Yes. Amen. Is there uh, a group of siblings in the room? Whether your brother or sister are in the room. A group of siblings. Their brothers or your actual biological brother or sister. Yes. Is there a sister that would like to make a presentation of love to them? Oh, they're so cute. Bless them in their hair. There's number three. All right, not related. But there are two friends in this room. There's a friend that would like to make a presentation of love to another friend. A friend. Okay, we have one that would like to make a presentation of love to the friend. All right, do we have a husband that would like to make a presentation of love to his wife? Raise your hand to serves. Man, God. Part of love is kept catching cues. Kept God. It's going to be a long ride home. You didn't raise your hand for me. Okay. This is not turning out how I want it. Is there a wife that would like to make a presentation of love to their husband? Even more of a pause. We only have a couple of options here. Is there? No, no, the Rashawns are about, they have another engagement today, and that's why we're allowing them to move first. Let's honor um, Perry and Alma Rashard. I love them so much. Amen. So they're exempt from this, even though they are willing to show love. Is there a wife that's here that would love presently? No, because this is our church. I, won't, I want to give everybody else. I know how much you love me, honey. You're so beautiful. Yeah, I just this is very disappointing. Um, we'll try this again. Is there a wife in the room that would like to make a presentation? You're already doing a presentation, okay? Thank you, Veronica. Jesus. All right. This is still going to be lovely. Um. Maybe it's weird because you don't know what's happening next. This is why you're reserved. Um, but y'all don't trust me? Okay. I'm going to get a new church. We're going to. All right. Sarcasm and tacos. I love it. So what we want to do is have a gift of expression of love. This is what I would love to do for um, the one that chose to make the volunteer expression from um, parent to child. Who was that? From parent to no, you're from daughter to mother. Yes. Um, who who was the one that wanted to do from the parent? Was that Tim? Was that you, Tim? Um, so Tim, this is what I would love for you to do, and let's get another one of these if you don't mind. I know we got we had yeah. Let's get another one if you don't mind. So Tim, if you don't mind, if you if you come up and bring your boys with you, he's excited. Like what's going to happen? This is my first son, my oldest son, Timothy French. Just stand here, sir. And I want you to, if you don't mind, take two of those. 
and give those as a gift of love to our our children. We call them our children. It's tied together. Yeah, one to each of them. All right. So, Tim, Tim, I want you to come here if you don't mind. This is a gift of love from your father. What did you say? That's the way it is. Yes. All right. So, how do you feel about your dad? Anything you want to say to your dad right now? Um, I love him. Look at that smile on his face. Isn't that wonderful? That's all we need. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I will give him the microphone, but I don't know what's going to come out of his mouth. Uh, we had the siblings. We had the siblings. I love them. Now they're ashamed. They don't know what's going to happen here. Well, I want y'all to come on up. Sisters. Thank you. Yeah. So you were the one about, yeah, yeah come on, on on either side. You didn't expect that was going to happen today, did you? I want you, I want you to stand on this side. And I want you to stand on this side. And I just want you to give this gift of love to your sister. Yes. She is. How much do you love your sister? A lot. I'm trying to pretend. Uh -huh. Everything she did for me, but she has been an example, a great example, and has set a path for all my siblings to follow. Uh, she is definitely a trailblazer, first generation grad, hoping to be the second gen. And I love you a lot. And keep on going, girl. <laughs> you are definitely <laughs> <laughs> she said she's a thug. She doesn't cry. I love that. I love that. We had one that wanted to make a presentation from. Um, I know she's coming with that one, but we had we had the sisters. We had the the parent of the child. I want to have now, um, and they they are part of our family. I want the Contreras to come on up. Yes. Yes. They're so beautiful. They match together. They look good as a unit. This is Brian and Veronica Contreras. And just come behind me. One comes to this side and just, yes, present this gift of love to your husband of many years. Yes, indeed. Many years. How, what, what do you love about, about Brian? I love everything. I love the way he loves me, first of all. Um, he's a good husband, a good father, a good partner, good friend. Yeah. She didn't want to talk anymore. How do you feel about that? Well, that took three requests for her to come up here in autumn. <laughs> so genuine, I think. <laughs> I, I love him. He's 29 years into this journey that Perry is talking about. So, and multiple milestones along the way to say, yes, we recommit to this journey. So, keep at it. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Okay. So, so that was love from the wife to the husband. I'm going to want our pastors, Pastor Sonia and Bradford Lowe. This man here. You didn't even, even know, just come around the side. You didn't know that you were making this expression of love to your own wife. And I know these, these two have been uh, just uh, an example of love for us for a long time. Just present this gift of love to your lovely wife. Praise the Lord. Sing it. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not going to sing, but it's been 34 years this year. So we've been married more than half our lives together. So she's the only woman that know everything about me because I wanted her to love me unconditionally. And why I love her? Because I know how much she loved me. And I'm a better man because of me.
Thank you, son. No, you did good. Go, go ahead. Please, please, please. Now, I want you to stay here because you're the one that made the decision to give the gift of love to a friend. Who is this friend that you're giving this gift of love to? Dr. Marietta Williams. We clap better than after doctors. This is Dr. Willis. Yes, indeed. Oh, you want to? No, I'm good. Oh, you can give it. Wow. Dr. Marietta Willis, um, having a friend, a real friend, is a true gift of love. And I feel that God blessed me truly when he sent you in my life. And it's been a blessing from day one. We are true sisters. True sisters. <laughs> and I just want to tell you how much I truly love you in every ounce of your being. You have a beautiful heart, a big heart, and most of all, may God continue to bless you abundantly. In Jesus' name. I love it. I think it were the prophets who deemed this. Friends, how many of us have been? <laughs> Ones you can depend on. Friends. Love that. Um, I, th I thought it would be better for us to have these expressions of love shown and seen. And it's very important, two reasons to receive and also to express. We are who we are based on how well we've been loved. I'll say that again. We are who we are based on how well we have been loved. Good decisions, bad decisions, forks in the road, hurting our own selves. We are who we are. A great deal can also surface back to how well we've been loved throughout our lives. Or can I say it this way? We are who we are based on our ability to process love all of our life. Because we may have been able to receive love the right way, but didn't process it right. I want to share this with you. According to, to Greek studies, there are eight different types of love. We may be familiar with them. Um, I want to bring them to you. There are eight different types of love. The one that we are most familiar with is called eros. E-R-O-S. Eros love, which is romantic love. It's passion. It's beautiful. Between two people. Um, it can move mountains. It also mess you up if not processed the right way. Romantic love. And regardless of where you are status-wise, everyone has the right to need or feel the need for romantic love. There is then Felucia. Fa Lucia, which is love of self. This is not in order. These are just types. But I think love of self should be like number two, okay? Because it's impossible to receive romantic love and process it the right way if you don't know how to love yourself well. It is impossible to receive love from siblings, love from anywhere else, if you don't know how to love yourself well. We will overcompensate or undercompensate in our relationships, when we don't know how to love ourselves well. Okay? There is philia, P H I L I A, philia, which is deep friendship. Okay? Deep friendship, friendship that goes beyond um, being a relative, deep friendship. The city Philadelphia, um, Delphi is city. It is known as the city of brotherly love. This is love that you have with one to another that is the goal beyond. I think all of us have at least one person that we consider family that's not family. They're not related to us by blood, but you love them more so than family members because some of your family members have lost their minds and you love them more. 
Um, I got a group of friends that I have not even met yet. We have met through social media, and I talk to them more than I talk to people I live with, but we have a, have a strong love for one another. I believe everyone needs love like this. We need deep friendship. Beyond spousal love, you need love from sister to sister, brother to brother, as free. You need it. Okay? There is um, storge. Storge, which is family love. Okay? There's nothing like having a, a real biological sister or a real biological brother or cousin. Some of us have aunts and uncles that we love like brothers and sisters. You know, it's nothing like that kind of love. It is sustaining. Um, sometimes you are, you can be in a low place, but then you get around your family, the people you're related to, and it just brings you up. It, bring, it brings a fulfillment to your life. And if, 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 even if you don't have a sister or have a brother, if you have, sometimes we have cousins that we love like sisters and brothers because we didn't have sisters or brothers or have a good relationship with them. You need storage. Here's another type of love. Ludus. L-U-D-U-S. Ludus. Which is playful love. Yeah, friends that you don't have um, a meaningful conversation with, nothing substantial at all. It's just silly. We just, we just, it is just jokes or memes all day. We don't, I don't, don't know how to have a serious conversation with them at all. Don't talk to me about anything deep or the things of God. We're just here for jokes all the time. And, and you need those kind of relationships. I, re, I can remember recently, I was going through a terrible thing. And this person just kept sending me memes and didn't care about what I was going through. They didn't. It's like, can't you see I'm hurting you? And, and they didn't, that's not their place in my life. Their place in my life is to make me smile. And my place in their life is to make them smile. And they know who I am and, and all of that, but they're just jokes. I can't share those jokes with you in the service, but, but they're there for me and I'm there for them and I need them. Okay? We all need that kind of playful love. There is pragma. Pragma um, is, and we'll, we'll hold off on, the, on, on that screen. Pragma is long-standing, non-sensual love. Okay? Pragma is long-standing, non-sensual love. Okay? When the romance wears off, it doesn't mean the love is gone. When, when things aren't cute anymore, it doesn't mean the love is gone. All right. Love isn't always bubbly and butterflies and, and strawberries. Sometimes love is uh, thumping you in the back of your head and saying, get it together. Sometimes love is put that down. Don't buy that. Sometimes, sometimes love is forcing you into a budget. Sometimes love is I'm not going to talk to you until you get your life right. Sometimes love is, I'm not going to let you go until you get your life right. Sometimes love can be strong and stern, but it's still love. All right? That is pragma. Then there's a kind of love that none of us need. It's mania. Mania is obsessive love. It's still love. It's just misplaced. The wrong way. None of us need mania. This is where you get maniac from. This is where you get someone who's crazy in love. Love shouldn't make you crazy, and it shouldn't be received as crazy. Love doesn't hurt you. But someone can hurt you and still say, but I love you. That's mania. Someone can abuse you and still say, but I love you. And in their own mind, in their own heart, they really believe that they love you. But you can't feel the love because of the craziness. We don't need that kind of love. Right? The eighth version of love, the eighth type of love is the one that the believers are most um, familiar with in a term, and that is agape. Agape is God's kind of love. Now, this is what I want to submit to you today, and the reason why we have this gift of love brunch this, this morning, afternoon. It is not that agape is a type of love in the same way that the other types I just read to you. It is not that agape is superior to all the loves, as if all those other loves do, do not matter. I want to submit this to you, and I hope you agree with me, that agape is the way the other loves are measured. That agape measures 
love socially, longstanding, romantically, between family, between friends, between spouses. It's all governed by agape. And you see agape in its fullness when you are loved well in those other ways. So it is not that you don't need those other types of love. You do. You need agape through those types of love. Y'all hearing me? We all need romantic love. If you're in a relationship, you need romantic love consistently. It can't be governed. Unless agape is there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you're not in a relationship, you still need love. Not just romantic love. Maybe that's not the place for it. But you still need love in its fullness in those other ways. And you can be loved the right way outside of a romantic relationship. So even if you are single, you are not deplete of love. You can still be loved well. Whatever marital state that you're in. You can still be fully loved and loved well. I told this to my wife and my son when we were driving here that you'll never experience all of these loves equally at the same time. You will never experience all of these types of love equally at the same time. At some point, it may be waning a little bit. I love my spouse, but I don't like her right now. So the love itself ain't romantic. It can be pragmatic, but not romantic. Still love her. The emotion ain't there, but I'm not going to let go of her hand. Sometimes you have spouses, or siblings rather. You may have siblings that you love deeply, but that fell out for a minute. And I'm not going to answer her phone call or her text. But that's still my sister. I love her. She just got on my nerves today, and I'll talk to her tomorrow. Right? Or sometimes you have love of friends that you may need to create a distance from Okay, still love them, but the interaction is different. You may not have it equally, but you'll still need it. And you'll still need God through it. If you don't let God govern how you love, or how you receive love, you'll mistreat people that you love. And still say, I love you. And be alone. And hollow. Because you've mistreated the people that you love. This is what I want for us to learn how to allow God to teach us how to love fully. And in teaching us how to love, it is how to receive it and how to be God's representative as we give it. I was talking with Ms. Richard earlier. We, we discovered something very important that when we are depleted of something, it is a sign to give, not a sign to complain. When I'm deplete of friendship, it is a sign for me to become a better friend. When I'm deplete of romantic relationship, that means there's something about me that needs to give to my wife what I need. Because it can't be gained out of an argument. You have never been in an argument and the person said, you know what, you're right. That has never happened. It's never happened. And some of y'all know y'all are wrong and still argue. Okay, I'm putting the mic down. I got, it got real tough on this side. Like, you know you're wrong the entire time. Now you just can find something else. That's why your shoes are nasty. That has nothing to do with the argument at all. Nothing is to be gained out of an argument. Nothing is solved out of an argument. When you get your emotions out of the way, you still have to solve problems that came in. Okay? I know this. I love and I need love too much to mess people over. So I have to be careful on what I say. Because it can ruin the love relationship. And there are people who are willing to love you from a distance and love you from afar because they can't stand the mistreatment that you're giving. I don't want that to be said of us. I want it to be said that we love well. That we learn how to communicate well through love. That it's not just what I'm getting. It's not just what have you done for me lately. But how can I give? How can I give to you now? How can I love you from a place that you need to be loved? Because I need to give you that love. I need to love my biological brothers in a way that they feel God. Hear me. I need to love my sister in a way that she feels God. Not that she just loves me. But when we love each other the right way, 
you feel the love of God through how people love you. And you also feel the love of God when you give love the right way. So I would give this to you, the same thing that came to us in our prayer meeting a few weeks ago. There were two words that came to us, and that is, until now. And to me, that is a symbolic of a lot of things. But in this particular message of love, I want you to take it this way, that you may have been deplete of love until now. You may have messed over love relationships until now. Let now be a reset. Let now be a restart. That no matter what happened before, we're not just tolerating people or keeping them in our world for a certain amount of time, but we're allowing the Spirit of God to teach us how to love ourselves, how to love others, how to love the ones that are closest to us, and maybe even reaching back and loving people that we have been estranged from, but showing them love in such a way that they experience the love of God. One of my fa favorite ministers talk about how her father sexually abused her for years. And she became a strong woman of God, leading thousands to Christ, multi-million dollar ministry, preaching all over the place, and still mad and upset about what her father did to her. And she's justified in that failure. Towards his older age, she saw him being stricken in age, and it came a press upon her heart that her father was going to die by Christ in his life. And so not only did she forgive him, but she had to grit her teeth and ask the Lord to save the father who sexually abused her for years. Not only did God do it, but he did it through her. He did it through her. And she has to look in the face of a man who physically was a maniac towards her. And she had to ex extend a God to him. In his dying days, not only did he receive Christ as his Lord and Savior, but she took him in, paid for his living until he died. Literally extended her income to keep alive the man who hurt her, who abused her, who almost changed her life, who almost ruined her thought process on love altogether. But yet she loved him and loved God enough that she wanted to represent God through her love to him. If she can do that, I believe all of us can love through hard things. I believe we can love through hard places. I believe people who hurt us had no idea they were maniacs. They had no idea what they were doing. And until now, they had a place in our world. Until now, they were keeping us from loving fully. What if our process and ability to love one another and love the right way is the key to unlocking everything else we've been believing God for. What if that is it? Not just forgiving, but loving. Because in the way we forgive, we say, okay, I accept your apology, now get out of my life. But what if we love them so much that if they needed us again, we'd be there for them? Because it's not about us. It's about what God wants. I want our hearts to be whole. I want our hearts to be whole. That we're not just loving by work, but we're loving for real. God, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for everyone who was watching, everyone who was in this room. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us in spite of how we have loved you. Thank you for loving us in spite of what we have not known about love. Thank you for healing our hearts in such a way that it's no longer about releasing what has done, been done to us. But until now, we live out of the now. And the same way that you love us now, we open our hearts to love anyone. No matter our history with them, we love them according to your love. We know that if we love with your love, you'll never allow us to be taken advantage of again. So I thank you, Lord, for giving us love, your love, that we may give to someone else. We are no longer defined by previous relationships. We're no longer de defined by previous grievances that we've had. But I thank you for healing us as we endeavor to love your people the right way. Thank you for being with us now. Thank you, Lord God, for everyone who has loved us and we did not give them the love back. I thank you, Lord God, for giving us the capacity to love the way you love. 
Thank you for healing our hearts and allowing us to move forward. And we vow to honor you with the way we love and with the way we receive love. In Jesus' name, amen.